Good morning, everybody. A Monday edition of Birds 365 here after week one of the NFL. Just one one game to go uh, in week one. That's tonight, but the Eagles get their win on Friday night. Johnny Mac, how you doing on this Monday morning, my friend? Doing well. The first overreaction Monday. It's yeah, my baby. favorite time of the year. A lot of people jumping off bridges around the country. A lot of people think their team is going to the Super Bowl. It's the, it's the best. There's always overreaction, but week one's the best. I'll tell you one one team one one fan base that doesn't think their team's going to the Super Bowl, and that's the New York Football Giants. They looked putrid yesterday. We're going to break <laughs> down. We're going to talk a little hey, bit. About they, they outscored Saquon at least. They didn't outscore the Vikings defense, but they outscored Saquon. Did they? I don't even think they did. Huh? I thought they had like six points on the board. Didn't well, they? they had six. I, well, I had to count three. Six to three. But yeah, right. touchdowns. Yeah. Uh, good stuff there. So we'll recap a little bit of week one. But Johnny Mac, as you said, it's an overreaction Monday. I want to thank everybody, by the way, for being here. Good morning, everybody. Eagles are 1-0. and So let's get that like button rolling for the Philadelphia Eagles 1-0. and More about the Saquon Barkley jersey giveaway a little bit later on in the program today. Johnny Mac, I want to give I want to give you a chance before we have two good guests today. We've got Jeff Kerr coming up in about 15 minutes from now. And then we'll have Chris Franklin, game uh, post-game Chris, as we call him. Uh, so we'll have him at 920 in the second hour. So looking forward to talking to both of those guys. Uh, but Johnny Mac, I want to ask you, what's your number one positive to take away from the Philadelphia Eagles week one win over the Green Bay Packers? Week one win. I, you know, I, I, this is a potential playoff team in Green Bay. We'll see with the Jordan Love stuff. So it could have been much worse, but yeah, yeah I uh, thought that three was three to six news. weeks. Not, not yeah. from an Eagles perspective, but it was, I was happy to see it wasn't too bad of an injury for him. Yeah. I, I think everybody should be, but I'm sure some people aren't. But I, I think that, you know, this is a, a very good team that's projected to be one of the better teams in, in the NFC. And that's, one of my concerns about giving up the home game and going to Brazil was that, and I said it evaporates if they won the game and they won the game. Um, so that evaporates and they have the, the tiebreaker over green Bay moving forward. So that to me is the biggest positive. And then, you know, the second part is they they won a game against a good team and they didn't play their best. So I think that's always good from a, uh, a coaching perspective because you get out of there with a win and you still got plenty of stuff to correct and plenty of stuff to teach and um, can be a little bit hard on the guys if you want to be. Uh, and we'll see, but I mean, you saw it around the league yesterday. If you're watching, if you took the time to watch some of the other teams, a lot of sloppy football and that's just the nature of the modern NFL because even the teams that do play some of their starters in the preseason, they don't play them a lot. So, you know, it's it's it tends to be sloppy, and it was it was sloppy. And you add the field into it, and that was a big part of it as well, especially defensively when it came to the pass rush. I think everybody's concerned uh, concerned about the Eagles' pass rush, but look, I'm going to give them a mulligan now. If it Monday night, a week from tonight. It continues at Lincoln Financial Field. Then, then I start to get a little bit concerned. But you know, that was a skating rink, especially for the guys up front trying to explode. And you saw how many times they slipped. So, I put an asterisk next to that. Um, keep an eye on it. But I am going to give them a mulligan for that because of that field a little yeah, bit. Yeah, fair, fair enough. Rush. And as you point out, the number one positive: if you travel four thousand plus miles for a home game Johnny Mac and you you come back one to no I think that's uh that's a good that's good news I thought for me that you know a positive for me was Zach Bowen on the defense I mean we thought that this linebacker core could be bottom in the league they still might be but Zach Bowen if he plays yeah, like he that, great. that every week great. they're not going to be the bottom linebacker core in the league that was pretty impressive 15 tackles two sacks uh for Zach Bowen he was all over the field so he's going to be my week one positive takeaway uh, Johnny Mac. Now I want to go to the go to the flip side. The week one negative. You come out of there with a win, but did you come out of there concerned with anything? What's your week one negative or your week one uh, concern coming out of the the win versus the Packers? Um, well, there's plenty of stuff to to nitpick about, starting with uh, um, the turnover worthy throws of Jalen Hurts. Um, that was. Uh, not good. You know, there were four or five of them. 
um, including back-to-back ones, and they were generally poor decisions, which is bigger. I don't, I don't care about the interceptions and to a certain extent until you, you peel back the onion and see what they were. Those interceptions were brutal. Late throws, uh, the second one in the end zone, across his body over the I mean, just cardinal sins of, of football. Uh, just brutal decisions. And hopefully just playing, you know, getting used to the speed of the game again. And we talk about veteran players. But still, week one, when you don't play in the preseason, um, you do have that little ramp up period. And almost weeks weeks one and two serve as the new preseason. Uh, but the games count, unfortunately, for 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 the teams. And hopefully that's just what it was. But, yeah, obviously that can't continue. Um, and then there are plenty of issues with the defense. The run defense was not good. Guys weren't getting off blocks, you know, mainly, may, may not mainly, but m- maybe possibly, again, because of the field, the tackling wasn't good. Um, and, and that could be the sloppiness of, again, preseason. Essentially, it's a preseason game. So, Plenty of nitpicking you can do on the defense, but it was interesting if you boil it down to certain guys. You mentioned Zach Bond; he got my game ball for the game. He was unbelievable. Yeah, he was. I didn't see that coming. Reed Blankenship was tremendous. Um, you know, I, I think he was the highest I, graded player on the team, wasn't he? Um, yeah, from PFF, yeah, he was the highest grade player on the team. Um, he was a, 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 a tremendous throughout the game. Um. And, 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 you know, Darius Slay, they didn't even go after Slay. I mean, they were scared to death of him. And that harkens back to Aaron Rodgers' days. Aaron Rodgers was smart. He never went after Slay when he was in Detroit. Right. Um, but he's 33 now, and you thought uh, – yeah, and part of it is they wanted to test uh, Quinion Mitchell. And then Quinion, a lot of positives there because they threw at him 10 times, and he gave up some plays. But overall, he held up very well, and I think people got to see the upside. Uh, so if you you boil down the certain individual players, it wasn't that bad. But the front seven was pretty bad um, as a whole, and hopefully that had a lot to do with the field. Um, hopefully. Yeah, so for me, the negative for me would have been, as you pointed out, the turnovers. But they do have a silver lining to that, right? I mean, you have three turnovers. Two of them come, you know – or, or, or two of them come in your own in your own red zone. I think it was the fumble was it was the fumble in our own red zone or was in our, was our, on our own side of the field. But anyway, well, the the, the, the the second interception was in the end zone going in the score. So that was that no, was that was cool. the other end. I'm talking about the first interception. They returned it back to the 18 or 19. Yeah, the first line. interception was the late throw down the middle, very late yeah. throw, and then the, the fumble the, came on our side of the field as well. The, the the theme of the 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 turner and the, even the ones that you know there would have been a pick six before the interception in the end zone that was essentially dropped and then there was another potential interception um that Jair Alexander should have probably corralled yeah. and did not um and the theme to all of those were late throws late throws um you know, not making that decision, which has been a which has been a a, a problem with Jalen Hurts. You got to trust what you see, um, deliver the football with competence, get it out on time. Uh, all of every all four of them, the two interceptions and the two drops interceptions were late throws. Every single one of them. So that's the thematic point there, and that needs to improve. And it will improve. I mean, you're not going to see. And I and I saw some five. Some people said there were five turnover worthy throws. There might have been. I can't remember if there was a fifth, but there were definitely four. There were quite um, a bit. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and 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 that's not good enough. I mean, and and that can't continue. But yeah. on the plus side, there's no way it will continue. Yeah, uh, the silver lining for me on the turnover thing is you turn the ball over three times. Two of them come in your side of the field, uh, and you and you still put up thirty four points and only give up twenty nine. So I thought the defense made two big stands, only getting you know yeah early the yeah, down six yeah. nothing. They were lucky. They were lucky to be down six nothing at that point. It could have easily been fourteen nothing, 
Uh, so I thought that was the silver line. And the defense made two good stands, and you still put up 34 points with three turnovers. So from that perspective, uh, it shows you how good this offense can be if they can if they can kind of rein that in. Uh, obviously, playmakers all over the field. Devontae was great. A.J. Brown was great. That was an, a, a fantastic route on his 67-yard touchdown. So uh, great stuff there. We got five minutes, Johnny Mac, till Ed Kratz. Good recap there. We'll, we'll continue Jeff to break Kerr. down. We'll get, we'll uh, get Jeff Ed Kerr. later. Sorry. Yeah. I'm thinking Ed Kratz. Uh, I just read an article from him on SI.com this morning. Uh, but Jeff Kerr coming up in five minutes, and then Chris Franklin, and now we're number two. John, just real quick, five minutes on uh, what you saw yesterday. It was a kind of a relaxing Sunday for us as – you know, normally we have game days on Sunday. So we kind of had a chance to consume the other teams in the NFL yesterday. An ugly week one, as it usually is, Johnny Mac. What were your takeaways, some of your takeaways from uh, the NFL as a whole yesterday? Well, the NFC East is the exact same. You got two good teams and two brutal teams. Yep. Um, and, and the Dallas Cowboys, by the way, look tremendous. Now, part of that is um, the the Browns were playing without both of their uh, starting tackles uh, for different reasons, um, and yeah, <laughs> the, the Cowboys took advantage to say yeah. the least. Mike the number of, he was destroying that defense, that D line. The number of pressures in that game was just unbelievable. Um, so from that standpoint, and 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 I think, and I said, you know, Jerry does his nonsense and he waits to the last minute and he yeah. extends that million large for Dak though. Yeah, but I I. I I warned everybody, the history of Jerry Jones is he's going to pay his players. He just oh, yeah. waits as long as possible to suck out every, uh, you know, keep his team in the headlines. Um, and Eagles fans tend to forget they were a really good team when they got those guys out there. And all of a sudden, Dak Prescott's paid and out there, C.D. Lamb's paid and out there. And how good was he, by the way? Um, and... Uh, Mike Parsons, as you mentioned, will get paid and is out there, you know, arguably the best defensive player in football in week one. Um, they're really gifted. And, yeah, it's going to be tough for – the Giants aren't surviving this. Uh, Joe Shane and Brian Table are not surviving this because people are just going to make the comparisons. And that and, and it's natural um, – and, and the Giants had to move on from Saquon Barkley, and I think a, a lot of people always – I always talk about the vacuum. It's not the same. For the Eagles, good fit. Super Bowl contender, extra piece. You saw the impact in week one. For the Giants, building the foundation of an offense, they already did it for six years. It didn't work. Um, They had to move on, but they're not going to be able to survive it. They're just not. It's it's a brutal team, a, a brutal organization. Um, they got an owner who doesn't understand that, to be honest. If you saw on Hard Knocks, uh, the situation that they're in, they're just not going to be able to survive it. And and Washington is, you know, they're going to suffer through the Jaden Daniel stuff. Um, he's probably going to get hurt if, if there's any indication of, of him playing the way he played yesterday. Um, so it's, it's, it's again, the haves and the have nots in the NFC East. Um, and I guess that shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. Uh, if it is, they're not paying attention. And then the rest of the league. Yeah. You saw a lot of sloppy football, a lot of, um, you know, I was watching uh, red zone. So I got, mo I got a feel for most of the, most of the early games, you had the Cardinals made a run at the Bills and collapsed. The Titans were were beating the Bears and collapsed. So you have that sloppy football with, uh, um, you know, de uh, offenses making mistakes, handing them back. Uh, Houston and and the Colts were was an interesting game, um, and they'll probably be two competitive teams. Unfortunately, Shane Steichen couldn't get it done. Panthers are the worst team in football. Oh my god. I mean the Saints put up a 47. And that's that's a that's a that's a bold statement because the Giants also played. But at least the Giants have some defensive players. Brian Burns, Kayvon to yeah. Dexter Lawrence, tremendous player. They have some defensive players. Carolina, oof. That is a bad football team. That's a bad um, football team. And I thought Bryce Young, he can he does not look good, man. He yeah. 
No, he's not. He doesn't have a lot of help, but yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't no. look good. Um, the Broncos, amazing. They only lost by six points, I think. Bo Nix looked terrible uh, as a rookie. Mo, well, all the rookie quarterbacks look terrible. Not going to be a CJ Stroud this year. Um, and then overtime, Lions Rams. That was a, that was a good game. The Lions um, should have won that game easily. So maybe a little bit of of concern for them. Rams were down to their third left tackle against Aiden Hutchinson, and they managed to tie the game and get it to overtime. And then just the Rams didn't have any anything left in the tank. So Lions are projected to be another great team in the NFC. But they there were some holes in that that team that maybe should make Eagles fans a a little bit happy. Yep. No doubt. Definitely was a week one yesterday. So for everybody that watched, you saw a lot of sloppy football in there. Uh, I for the life of me can't figure out what the heck happened to Deshaun Watson. That is a different quarterback uh, than the guy we saw previous to his suspension. So we'll see if he can turn it around. Uh, I got two super chats. I'm going to get through. We got Jeff Kerr. Uh, coming up a, uh, next here on Birds 365, Afredo checks in. Johnny Mack, he says, back to practice to work on defense and turnovers. Appreciate it, Afredo. Thank you for checking in, man. Um, I thought the defense was a little bit better than I honestly expected. They do have some stuff to work on, no doubt, that pass rush. Uh, and then the turnovers for sure. Johnny Mack, what's your response to Afredo? Yeah, I mean, yeah, defense has got to get better. Turnovers got to get yeah. better. That's pretty uh, – I will say, I, you, John, know, you know, we talked about the pass rush just real quick. It's one thing to talk about the slippery field, and I agree, right? Like, you got to give them a a little bit of a mulligan. The thing that concerned me was the snap counts with Bryce Hoff. He had less snaps than Nolan Smith and Brandon Grant. It's one thing to not get to the quarterback because you were slipping and stuff like that. Nobody got there. Vic didn't even have you on the field. He didn't even trust you you on the field more than Nolan and BG. I thought that was a little concerning Mm -hmm. for me. Yeah, I, I mean, what it was very close. Um, yeah, so like I'm not concerned snaps, about it. Is that, is that yeah, I mean, that could be that could be the part of the game. It could be you, you talk about the start of the game. It was all red zone stuff uh, early for the Eagles because of the situation, and they played well. But you know, maybe that affected the the snap counts. You're playing situational football early, so I wouldn't make too much of that, especially because it was so close. Um, I, 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 yeah, I saw a lot of people got it. it it's, you know, I, 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 Hey, worry about it. If you want to, I think Huff played 30 Smith played 31 grand played 32. I mean, yeah, I, 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 we have to see if that continues. Yeah. That's a problem. If, if it's a one week thing because they were in the red zone too much or whatever, or certain packages, Right. Or, you know, maybe Brandon was hand not maybe Brandon was the only one who played well. So maybe he was handling the turf better. Um, and and maybe that upped his his numbers. Um, I'm su- I, if, if any, if you look at those three, I'm surprised how much Nolan played. Um, but I wouldn't I wouldn't put too much stock into it just week one. Good stuff there from Johnny Mac. And appreciate it, Alfredo, for the super chat. Vulnerable Vitality. I like that name. Thank you for the super chat, man. We appreciate it. He says, I think Bond's 15 tackles ties a franchise record. I don't have the stat book. I'm not sure if that's true. Well, that's or Jeff Kerr. That's why Jeff first. Yeah. So we'll have he, Jeff Kerr. Yeah. I find that hard to believe, but I, I don't too. know. That doesn't seem like that. It's much. like the worst stat in the world. So I don't care. To, to, but Jeff will probably know. So we'll ask Jeff. We'll bring, up, we'll bring that up with Jeff Kerr. Coming up next here, uh, Vulnerable Vitality. Thank you for the super chat, man. We appreciate it. A little update on our Saquon Barkley jersey giveaway. He did it, everybody. Week one, we are giving away a jersey. Uh, so I'm not doing it today. We're going to do it tomorrow. I want to hear from you guys in the chat at a, at a good time. I was going to do a custom show uh, to give away the jersey. Today is the last day to enter or to become a member to be entered into the week one giveaway so if you're not a member by day's end you will not be entered into the week one giveaway i'll do a show tomorrow i'm going to put everybody who's a member into a random generator uh, and we're going to pick it and we're going to give it away and then you'll have to confirm uh, with me that it's your account and then we'll, we'll i'm going to ship it directly to you so i'm going to buy it from the nfl website the shop and ship it right to you uh so that's what we will do 
Uh, Saquon says do it on 365. Maybe I'll do a little after hours on 365. I'll do it from 10 to 10, 15, let Johnny Mac get out of here. Um, so then maybe I'll do that tomorrow. Uh, but anyway, that's when we're going to do it. So if you do want to become a member, do it today. Uh, and then we will give that jersey away tomorrow on Birds 365 at the end. Good idea, Saquon. I think that is a little bit of a better idea. So good stuff there. Before we get to our commercial break, Jeff Kerr coming up next. I want to tell you a little bit about BetUS. Are you guys looking for a new sports book this football season? I have the answer for you. And we have an update on the promotion from BetUS. They have now upped it for all of our YouTube uh, people on Jacob Sports from 125 to 150% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits up to $2,000. So make sure you go to betus.com.pa. Uh, they are the answer, everybody. If it's good for former Birds quarterback Michael Vick, it's definitely good for Jacob Sports. BetUS has the fastest payouts in the industry. They have 24-7 personalized customer service, and they have live wagering on all major games, and you can even get 10% back on your net losses twice a year. So go to betus.com. Dot PA and use the code YouTube 150. You can see it on our scroll there at the bottom of the screen, YouTube 150, and you'll get a 150% sign up bonus. So go to betus.com.pa and Birds 365. We'll be back in three minutes with Jeff Kerr on the other side. 